the same veil remains un unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ Jesus. What is that veil? The veil is holding on to the Old Covenant. It's holding on to religious, to religious activities. The veil is holding on to tradition, or tradition that has been passed down to us from our fathers. That is a veil, and that veil blinds one. One does not see. When we hold on to veil, we hold on to tradition, we hold on to, oh, this is how it has to be. But we have, if we not allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, because when we are led by the Holy Spirit, we do it the way God wants us to, be, to do it. We will see God, but when we hold on to tradition, there's no how we hold on to tradition, and we will see God the same way, the same time. The Bible says that the veil remains in the, in the reading of the Old Testament, in the whole covenant, the covenant of the blood of bulls and rams, the covenant of the blood of, of, of the covenant of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. When we hold on to the Old Covenant, we cannot see Jesus. As long as we hold on to the Old Covenant, we cannot see Jesus. No, a pastor was talking about when he said, someone said that, if they kill the Christian, you have to kill the person's family members. The family members have to kill the person back. It sounds, it sometimes it sounds that is how it should be. We are not fools. But it's not about being a fool. In that case, that means that the disciples of Jesus would have gone back to kill the, 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 the chief priests and the Jews that killed Jesus. Because how can they kill their master for free? How do we preach the gospel to those that we have killed? I know it is painful when it happens to a loved one. It is painful when it happens to our person. But our own place is not to go back and fight back. Vengeance is the Lord. I will repay. He's the one that fights our battles for us. It sounds like foolishness. But how do we, how do we win the ones that we have beaten with sticks? How do we preach the gospel to the ones that we have broken their head? How do we tell them that Jesus loves them? How do we preach the gospel? It is for gospel's sake that we bear most of the things that we bear. It's not because we don't know how to fight back, but it's, called, it's for the sake of Jesus that we take the things we take. It is normal human nature to fight back, but it is the grace that we receive that we see that the, Jesus said when they slap you this side, turn the other side. It is grace that we have received. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We have received strength to resist, to, to, to run away when we know that this person, I can beat this one. This one is too small. But, but it is grace that we receive to say, no, I will let him go. For what? For the gospel's sake. It's not because of our own strength. It's for the sake of the gospel. We bear the things we bear because of the sake of the gospel. The Bible says that we all with unveiled face. Because we have turned to Jesus, that veil has been taken away from us. It is when we turn to Jesus that that veil of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, life for life, is taken away from us. Because why? We now behold Jesus. We see Jesus as our, as our example. The Bible says that he bore our shame. He was beaten. He was, he was bruised. Yet, the Bible says that he did not open his mouth. He did not say anything. He just allowed them. The Bible says, like a sheep, he was led to the, to the, to the, to the she, like a sheep led to the sharer. He opened not his mouth. It is for the sake of the gospel that we also follow the example that Jesus has laid down for us. That 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We behold Jesus. That is the example that we see. It is the image of Christ that we behold. The more we behold Jesus, the more we behave like him. The more we behold Jesus, the more we act like him. The more we behold Jesus, the more our character is being transformed to the same image of Christ. Because it is what you look at. What you look at is what you look like. What you look at is what you look like. So the more we behold his face, the more we act like him. The more we behold the glory of the Lord, the more we behold the image of Christ, the more we behave like him. And how do we become, how do we get to behold this image? The more we study God's word, the more we see, because the more we study the word of God, is the more we, we, the more we are being built from within. The more we dedicate our time to the reading of God's word, the more we dedicate our time to the fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, the more we are being transformed. To behold is to become. To behold is to become. 
as we behold, we become. As we behold, we become. So the more we behold, the more we become like him. And the more we are being transformed, the more we are being changed. We see that some things that we used to do naturally begins to drop off from us. Some characters that we felt that we could not let go begins to drop off from us. Because why we behold? We are beholding the image of Christ. We are beholding Jesus. We see him in all that we do. We see him in every conversation that we have. We see him in everything that in every in every in every in everything that we do. All that we do is wrapped around. You know, I, I listened to a preacher, his first said, he said, You are first a Christian before you are a banker. You are first a Christian before you are a doctor. You are first a Christian before you are a farmer. Jesus comes first before everything else. When we behold him, Jesus becomes first in all that we do. We are not trying to balance this and balance this. Everything is wrapped up in one. In the Jesus that we have received. The Bible says that as we behold as in a mirror, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. And that is being transformed from one face to another, from one stage to another, from one level to another. We begin to see ourselves that we are growing. Even those that are around us will say, ah, you have changed too. When you see people around you begin to say, ah, you have changed too. You will be, you'll be wondering, ah, what happened? You say, ah, you're not the same person we know. Ah, maybe this one is pretending. But the more they begin to see, they realize that you are not pretending. Oh, this is the new character that, you have, that they have gotten in Christ Jesus. It's not just, it's sometimes, some things happen, some people, some things happen automatically. The, mo the moment they give their life to Christ, some things just begin to lift up from them. But there are some people that they grow day by day, day by day, day by day. We have to build up our most holy faith. We are being built up day by day. There are some things that happen. The moment to give your life to Christ is automatic. You are saved. But there are some things that salvation is it's, it's a personal work. You have to work out your, your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we are being built up day by day. We are being built up day by day. We are being transformed every step of the way. We are being transformed every step of the way. And that's why Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, to become to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And how do we come there? How do we get there? Is by being is by developing developing in the spirit. How do we develop in the spirit? Is the studying of God's word, the meditation of God's word, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. That is how we are being transformed to the same image from glory to glory. And I pray that the Lord will help us as we continue in this journey with Christ. The Lord will help us as we grow in faith. The Lord will help us as we stand and we will prevail in the name of Jesus. And you know, it is when we are being transformed that the things that we left behind, those that are coming behind us, they will receive what we have dropped behind. If we are, if we are not, if we are still veiled, what we will leave back for those behind us will be veiled. If, we have, if the veil is not taken off from us, what we will leave behind for those coming after us will be tradition. But the Holy Spirit will not be leading it will just be traditions left down by for, for generations to come. But when we leave, but when we are, when, when we have been, when the veil is taken away from us, what will leave back for the generations coming after us will be life. Our words that we leave back for them will be life. They will not be, they, they, will, they will not be lost in a world that there is, feels like there is no hope because Jesus is the only hope. The Bible says if, we are, if, we, if, if all that we have is in this world, then we have all men most miserable. We will leave back something tangible, something good for the generations coming after us. And I pray that the Lord will help us that as we grow from grace to grace, as we grow from glory to glory, those coming back behind us, we will leave something good and something meaningful, something tangible. We will leave the life of Christ that we have received back to the generations coming in Jesus' mighty name. Let's begin to bow down our head and begin to talk to God for his word that we have heard this, this, this moment. That